Okay, good morning, everyone. And one by one, we're filling up. Yeah, there they come. So, the doors are open. Morning, Christine, Elizabeth, Nicola, Roisin, and Thomas. Uh, Linda Wallace, as well, has just joined us. And Edward, another regular. Good to see you all back. Um, uh, myself and Stuart have a, another guest today. We've got um, my colleague from Sight and Sound. We've got Tony Shrub, who will be joining us for the demos, uh, the demonstration and the presentation this morning. Morning, Thomas. Just left a comment in the chat box there. And that's a good segue, actually, Thomas. Thank you for that. So we've got 18 people in the room so far. So morning to everybody that's joining us again. Morning to everybody, anybody that's new. Um, Thomas has, has just left a, a message there in the chat box, which you're all welcome to use throughout the session, as always. Um, we've got a chat box, um, which you can use the shortcut Alt and H. If you're using a, a, a Windows uh, platform, um, I believe it's Command and H if you're on a Mac. Um, yeah, please do leave any any questions in the chat box or comments, observations. There's also a Q&A box for any more, more substantial uh, questions or comments. There isn't a shortcut for the Q&A, which is uh, slightly frustrating, but um, you do have the Q&A box as well. And you do have the ability to raise your hand as well. If you'd like to voice your, your questions, um, we can we can um, allow you to, to speak at a, a sort of appropriate time during the session. So yeah, please. Can I just can I just interject? Yes, Tony, go for if it. If you're um, using the Q and A box, can you please um, address your questions to all panelists and? Um, well, attendees. attendees and panelists yeah. then everybody yeah. can see what the question is as we answer it thanks yeah thanks tony no, that's a good point yeah it's um that's easily forgotten actually um yeah if you can when you you're sharing any question just make sure there's a little tab that allows you to choose who you want to share that question with if you make sure you're selecting all attendees and panelists then everybody can see what questions are being asked so that we're all up to speed Great, good, good, good. So we've got 23, um, it's three minutes past, but I'll, 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 I'll give a couple of minutes. So we'll probably kick off about five past if that's all right. Um, we have had 50 people register for this session, um, which is great. Again, uh, we've had really good numbers for these sessions over the, over the weeks, lots and lots and lots of interest um, in, you know, a variety of different devices, topics. Um, today's all about low vision. Um, so we're going to be looking at a variety of different solutions um, focusing on, on low vision. Um, and the, the solutions today that you're going to see have actually been tailored towards three different eye conditions um, and the difficulties that that person may, may encounter with, with that condition. So uh, it's quite a specific session, um, but I'm sure you can all um, see the benefits so you will see the benefits of the devices um, for a variety of, of eye conditions as well um, good so it's four minutes past we'll give it one more minute before we kick off just have a look down our list morning patsy another regular perfect Good. Okay, guys. Well, I make that just before five past, so it doesn't look like anybody else is trickling in. So without further ado, we'll make a start. Good. So for anybody that's just joined, um, I'll try not to repeat all of that, but um, good morning. First of all, welcome back um, to another bi-weekly social hub session with Sight and Sound Technology and Seascape. Great to have you all here. These sessions have been a breath of fresh air for us. You know, it's been brilliant. Um, the response, the engagement that we've had, the interest um, 
it's it's fantastic and we have no plans to um to stop doing these sessions you know post lockdown now that things are slowly getting back to whatever normal is um myself and Stuart and guests uh plan to, to continue these sessions um for the foreseeable as long as there is the interest which which uh, evidently is so um so that's good news good so um yeah so i've mentioned um to, to the guys that arrived a few minutes ago um as always please use the facilities we've got the chat box which is alt and h um for the shock on a, on a windows uh windows keyboard or command and h on a mac i believe um please use the chat box um please use the q and a box as well for any substantial questions all we ask is that when you're using those um uh, those those facilities that you you address your questions to all attendees and panelists so that we can all we're all in on um, on what's going on. Um, you can also raise your hand um, if you select yourself in the the panelists or the attendees list. Just select your name, go into more, and raise hand. We'll get to you at an appropriate time and, and allow you to voice your um, voice your question as always. Um, and also, um, you know, as, as these sessions really are for you guys, they're about, you know, for you, about you and, and your questions, queries, issues, ob observations about, you know, technology. Um, you know, please do share your experiences um, throughout the session. You know, just please leave your, leave your questions and your, your comments um, as frequently as you, as you want. Um, it's really nice for us all to sort of share um, our different and varying experiences with technology. Good. All right then. So let's kick off with the presentation. So this presentation has been developed um, as an interactive webinar. So it's all about um, low vision today. Um, and um, yeah, we're going to be looking at a few different scenarios and we're going to be asking you guys to, to, uh, to get involved and, and give your thoughts and opinions as we move through. So obviously, most of you will know me and Stuart um, from C uh, myself from Sight and Sound, Stuart from Seascape. We've got Tony Shrub with us from, from Sight and Sound as well today. Um, Tony looks after the sort of southwest of the country. Is that right, Tony? Yeah, that is right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I look after the north of England and Scotland. Um, and then obviously Stuart's up in Scotland with Seascape. So there we go then. So um, for anybody that doesn't know anything about uh, Sight and Sound or Skiscape, very brief uh, background. So Sight and, Sight and Sound have been uh, been in existence for over 40 years now. Um, so we obviously specialise in solutions, technology solutions for the blind, for the visually impaired, and for those with learning difficulties. Um, software, computer software, and and hardware um, as well. Uh, we offer detailed face-to-face uh, -face training as well as remote training as well. Um, and we also have a designated technical support team as well. So we're very much about the sort of, you know, the, uh, the aftercare is a, is a, is a big, uh, big part of, of, of what we do. You know, once you've got the solution, how we help you to use it and how we support you going forward. Um, and I'll hand over to Stuart briefly, just to give you a bit of a background about Seascape. Yeah, morning everybody. Um, my name's Stuart Beveridge. I work with a very, very small charity in Fife called Seascape. Um, we only have around 17 staff, so that should give you an idea of the, the size of us. But we, we cover the, the Fife area um, and we, we do quite a lot of different things. We have a, a site support team who um, go out and teach people, you know, life skills, cane skills, etc. Then you have my side, which is the assistive technology side. So um, I deal with, um, because I don't have any side, I deal with the, the, the audio side of things, if you like, and the smart side of things. So everything from mobile phones to um, screen reading software, etc. I cover all that side. Um, we also have a, a volunteer um, community engagement side of things as well for befriending, etc. And the final part of our charity at the moment is we also do have um, a, a fully um, functioning optician service, which, you know, helps the charity with, um, you know, income, etc. And uh, I should say as well that we do have a low vision side for the assistive technology. We have a lady who deals with um, the, the magnification side of things as well. So that's just a brief 
overview of our charity. Perfect. Thanks, Stuart. And you always seem to, you always add that in, very, very small charity, but, you know, value very, um, very highly as well. And, uh, yeah, I think these sessions have really, um, yeah, it's been great to, to, to partner with you guys for these sessions. Um, great. So what I'll do now is I'll hand over to Tony Shrub, who will, um, yeah, he'll give you a, a bit of a background about, about the format of the session, um, and then he'll introduce our first scenario. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, um, Sam. Right. Good morning, everybody. So you've had the welcome, you know, about sight and sound, and we certainly know about Seascape. Um, the next part of this is very much interactive. You're going to get involved as well as us. So we're going to meet three people with very different eye conditions. Uh, we're going to go through uh, some possible solutions to overcome their difficulties. Uh, and at that point, I would be demonstrating some equipment as well. But at that point, it's down to you to do a bit of work. Um, we want you to come up with some answers uh, as to how we could best uh, solve the issues that uh, are presented uh, to these, these uh, individuals. So without further ado, let's move on to the next slide. And we will meet uh, a lady called Catherine. So Catherine, she's a 74-year-old who lives alone. She's got age-related macular degeneration. Now, um, the things we've been asked to help Catherine with are completing her cross-stitch, reading greetings cards from her family, and seeing things close up, including a medication. So that's Catherine's situation. Now, age-related macular degeneration, I'll give you a simulation as how Catherine sees the, uh, sees the world. Okay, so macular degeneration affects the uh, central vision. Uh, Catherine will not be able to pick up any detail. Now, people tell me that this is pretty good for uh, somebody with macular degeneration. Uh, a lot of uh, people with it see far less than that. This is a representation. Generally, they will have their peripheral vision. Uh, so it's not completely blind. Uh, you will be able to pick up images, but it's the, very much the detail that disappears. Not very pleasant. So let's uh, see what we come up with uh, to help Catherine. Over to you, Sam, when you're ready, that's it. Okay, so bear in mind, she wants to complete a cross stitch. She wants to read greetings cards from her friends and family, and she needs to see things close up, including labels and her medication. So first off, we've got Portable magnifying glass, you're all familiar with these. This particular, we've, we've put two times magnification. They are fixed, uh, but you can get different powers. You've got a handle, they're portable and lightweight, generally sc scratch resistant, shatterproof, and they're relatively inexpensive. You can pick them up for, depending on the, the, the type and the, the magnification level, you can pick them up for about 20 pounds. Moving on from there, We've got the electronic portable video magnifiers. Now these differ in as much that you've got uh, continual magnification from two to 14 times um, on one particular. It varies depending on the screen size. Uh, the one we featured, I will show you three, but the one we featured is a five inch uh, screen. Again, it's portable. It's got a built in reading stand. So you have a 45 degree angle to read at. Now, more importantly, you've got 20 high, car high contrast, I'll say it in a minute, 20 high cross con Take say it for me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> 20 high con contrast color modes. I don't know why I struggle there with you that. Go. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> but I'll, I'll uh, demonstrate that when, when in the next section. So there's the portable video magnifiers. Now we're on to bigger desktop video magnifiers, uh, generally a 24 inch screen. Uh, with a camera facing down onto an XY table, which moves in all directions with your document or your work on it. Uh, 30 times magnification. Uh, they can be, it says here, lightweight, collapsible and portable. They can be. Uh, then you're looking at a 12 or a 15 inch screen. Uh, the one featured in the image at the top is very much a desktop. It goes on the table and stays there. Um, 33 screen color modes, so we've got that 20 high co contrast color modes again. Um, I mentioned an XY table, it does say you're here fixed. You can have either, and it's got an auto focusing camera. So that's a desktop. Next one is 
another desktop model, but it features these three initials OCR. Um, somebody quickly put in the uh, chat box what they think OCR stands for. Competition with a head. Optical re character recognition from Edward. Well done, Edward. Yeah, of course it does. Uh, okay, so what's the difference? <clears throat> We've got a visual image on the screen which we can magnify, change the color just as you can with all the others. But the OCR feature will take a snapshot of the page and then read it back to you. So you've got this audio output in addition to uh, the, the uh, screen magnification. Moving on from there, we've got f a wearable device, the Orcam. You may be familiar with this, Orcam My Reader. Uh, I'll show it to you in a little while. It's a wearable text-to-speech device, again OCR. It'll read uh, printed and digital text, uh, and it attaches to a pair of glasses, as you see in the image there. A couple of little magnets keeps it secured to the arm of a pair of glasses. Uh, it says tells the time, uh, just a turn of the wrist. That will be on another model, which is called the My Eye. Uh, that's got facial recognition, color uh, detection, and various other features. But the My Reader that we're featuring here purely reads uh, the printed text. So, this is where you do your bit. Uh, in the uh, chat box, if you come up with a solution, a number of solutions, it's entirely up to you. Uh, we'll discuss that in the next section. We'll give you a couple of minutes just to think about it and get your thoughts into the chat box. So, off you go. You don't know anything about them. I was going to demonstrate them at this point, wouldn't I? So let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, Tony. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would great. be good, wouldn't it? Okay. I'll hand over to uh, to you then, Tony. Right. That's fine. That's great. Thank you. So here we have. I'll move them out the way. Um, a range of, uh, in this case, the Ruby video magnifiers. This is a little three and a half inch screen. Um, it will feature color changes magnification, continuous magnification. It has a handle that you can pull out and use it around the shops for checking prices, ingredients, um, sell by dates. This is the one that was in the image, the XL HD. Now you'll notice it's got a 45 degree reading angle, which is better than the other one in that you can sit quite comfortably at a table. That is in full color. So if you want to see pictures or anything in color, you can do. Now, I'm going to change the magnification level just by pressing this button here. And as I say, it's continuous. And we come down. Now, this is a newspaper. So uh, the quality of the print is never very good. That's in full color. But if I change it to a high contrast black and white, it's a lot sharper, a lot clearer. And then we can go through various other color combinations, negative. Uh, that is blue and yellow, but the lighting in here doesn't show it too well. And then that is, um, believe it or not, yellow on a black background. Um, I'm told, and I don't like generalizing, but I'm told that uh, that color combination suits a lot of macular disease, uh, people with macular disease or degeneration. Uh, hence, the Macular Society using them as their house colors. Again, if I fold it flat, it's going to switch itself off, but I'll turn it back on. We've got a handle here that will come out one, two positions. So again, we can use this around the shops, uh, sell by dates, uh, ingredients or whatever. And more importantly, let's go to full color. Medication. Okay, so that answers um, another of our issues. Moving on from that five inch model, we'll go to the seven inch. This is the Ruby seven. Again, you've got 45 degree reading angle. It features everything the others do with the color changes, the magnification. You can freeze the image on all of them if you need to. And we can, on this particular one with a pivot cam, we can, now I'm gonna change that color to full color. We can swivel, you can't see that, we can swivel that camera around to various positions, but more importantly, forward facing. So I'll do this briefly. 
There you go. That's me. No, you don't see it. That's me. So I can put my lippy on in the morning, put my mascara on in the morning using that as a magnifier. <laughs> okay. Again, there's no handle. It's far too big. But if I fold the, the reading stand flat, switch it back on again. It does have there. I can use it as a handheld device. And it does have, it's difficult to demonstrate, but it does have a certain amount of distance vision as well. So they're the um, portable electronic video magnifiers. Now, we mentioned the desktop. They work very, very similarly in as much as it, uh, you've got the, the magnification, you've got the color changes. Um, so bear that in mind. Let's move on to the all cam. This is the all cam, okay? camera on the front here little speaker at the back these two are two little magnets this will attach to a pair of spectacles just like that okay now I can't do this with two cameras so I'm going to take my glasses off I'm going to put these ones on it's just Right now, can you hear the sound? It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously quite fairly quiet, but we can just about pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's grab a book. So here we have a book. Now I'm going to look at the page, and I'm just going to point like that. Come on. Oh, that was not appropriate. <laughs> okay, I stopped it. Uh, uh, okay, right, let's take another uh, s snapshot. I cancelled that. Okay. That's because of the light conditions. Just to let you know why it came up with that. Um, um, that's uh, about the women that Jack the Ripper killed. So that's the all cam. You can use it for um, notice boards, reading uh, notices on notice board. I took a chat around um, the streets uh, a few months ago. I'm going to just turn that off. Uh, took a guy around the streets the other day, and he was reading the street signs, um, the uh, street names. Uh, there were a lot of roadworks going on, and he was picking up exactly what was going on from the signage. So that's extremely useful. So that's the all cam. Right. Okay. So Thanks. can we go um, back to that slide we were on? We can. And while we're doing that... Um, Thomas has just asked, can you tell us how long the batteries would last on the Ruby range? On the Ruby range. Okay, you're going to be between... Uh, now, this is continuous use, and I'll explain what I'm, why I say that. You've got between two hours and three hours. Now, if you leave the Ruby um, unattended, it, after a period of time, it will shut itself down, so that conserves battery life. So, on permanently... The smaller ones, two hours. The Ruby 7, three hours. Uh, well, they will run off the, the mains adapter, so they'll charge the battery, and you can use it at the same time. So if it's uh, convenient for you to do that, if you're close to a power supply when you're using it, then you can run it like that to conserve your battery life. The Orcam, whilst we're on the subject of batteries, that will last, um, again, continuous use, about two hours. But it only takes 40 minutes to charge up. Now, what I do with my when I'm demonstrating it, I've got, uh, you know, these, um, what do they call them, power banks. I just attach that to it, and it runs off of that for a lot, lot longer. Okay, right. so let's go through um, what we need to do. Complete a cross-stitch, greetings cards, seeing things close up, including labels on the medication. I've given you some pointers. See what you come up with. Yeah, so we've had a few chats. Few, yeah, we've had a few, a few comments. Yeah, so we've got uh, from Amy, 
Um, she said that the video, portable video magnifier would suit caffeine for reading cards and medication. Um, oh, Christine Scott's left us, uh, left us quite, a, say. quite a chunk <laughs> there. Christine's <laughs> been doing her homework. So the cost stitch would be the big problem. Uh, ideally, you would need a solution where you could sit comfortably. Very, yeah, that is, yeah. that is true. It needs to be hands-free. Uh, give a very high degree of magnification of the cross stitch, the fingers and the needle, a handheld magnifier on a clamp might solve that. But I'm not sure if the degree of magnification would be high enough. An electronic magnifier camera that could be positioned to pick up the hands should work. A desktop electronic magnifier would give a very good quality image, but it will be comfortable to hold the cross stitch underneath that while working. Well, funny you should say that, Christine. Um, because, Tony, that's right, you can... Thread a needle, can't you, underneath the camera? Yeah, the movies, can you? yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just. Which we don't, we don't necessarily have to. No, all right. Let's... Yes, you can. I, I was doing it earlier. Yeah. Um. So, yes, you, you certainly can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does have the ability to to sit, so you can, um, put obviously use your hands underneath the camera to thread, thread the needle. Uh, if, right. You know, like let's just answer a question from tracy uh so yeah, with yeah. your cam do you have to take a picture of where you want to read right uh, tracy yes you do um now th this can be done one of two ways i chose to point to the text on the page and it would read the whole of that page however you've got automatic page recognition where it's looking constantly for text and as soon as it sees any it will take its own snapshot and read it back to you which is to a degree what was happening with mine uh, why it was i was lost control of it to a dig to a certain extent yes it will that annoys me because as i say it's constantly looking for text and so it will read it as soon as it sees any whether you want it to or not but generally point to the text and it will read it for you okay good there any right. other quick questions right um christine's come up with some good ones and hopefully i'll be able to answer most of that in in the, on the next slide Yes. Good. So you're happy to move forward, Tony? Yep. Yep. Great. So these now, these are, th there's no wrong answers. I'll stress that immediately. So if you disagree, then we'll, we'll discuss it. But there are no wrong answers. These are, from our experience, the preferred options. Portable magnifying glass. Yes, it's inexpensive. It will work if you get the right level of magnification for your particular eye condition. You could, as uh, was suggested, have it on a um, loop around your neck. They've got these ones that will sit against your chest and you hold your work underneath it. That would certainly um, work in Catherine's case for a cross stitch. Portable video magnifiers, I think. Um, the Rubies are probably the, the, the biggest sellers in, in our whole portfolio because they are so versatile, um, because of the color changes, they're pretty well engineered pieces of uh, equipment. People like them a lot. Um, yes, Catherine could use it to do a cross stitch, but as was suggested, a desktop magnifier would be far better. Now, the qu question was, or, or the query on that one was, let's just refer back to it, um, holding your uh, cross stitch underneath it. I said to you that it's got um, auto and fixed focusing. So you could put your cross stitch on the table, fix the focus on there. So it didn't matter what you were doing with your hands, it wouldn't try refocusing. So yes, you could. And in my opinion, that will be f by far the best solution uh, for a cross stitch. The rubies, yes, great for her... Um, medication, reading greetings cards, and things like that. So we've missed two items out. Let's go to those, Sam. Mm -hmm. OCR desktop magnifier and the OrCam My Reader. OCR optical character recognition will recognize printed text. Um, cross stitch pattern's pretty complicated. It's certainly not gonna make head nor tail of that, although it will put it on the screen. Uh, just as the other desktop magnifier would. The OrCam My Reader, as you've seen, it reads text purely and simply reads text. Greetings cards generally are going to be handwritten, so that won't solve it. The desktop 
the portable magnifying glass and certainly the uh, portable video magnifiers would deal with that no problem at all. This is why we've put the others below the line. Now you could argue that the uh, desktop magnifier with OCR would suit her. Yes, it would, but let's go through some pricing. 20 pound for the portable magnifying glass, around about 2,000, 1,900, 2000, depending on the model for the desktop magnifier and from 400 to 700 for the portable video magnifiers. Uh, the OCR desktop, you're up to £3,000. The Orcam, over £3,000. So, well, the Orcam is not going to do everything she needs to, so I don't think that's an option. The OCR desktop, I think it's overkill. Does she really need it to read back to her? I don't think she does. Uh, so she'd be paying a lot of money for a feature that she would never use. That's why it's below the line. But, as I say all the time, it's not my decision. In this instance, it's Catherine's decision. She's got to decide which is best for her. And if she thought the OCR would be useful to her, then fair enough. But as I say, no wrong answers, just some slightly better than others. I hope everybody uh, agrees with that. I'm sure some people won't, but hey-ho, there you go. <laughs> right, that's, Thank that's you, Catherine. Sorry. So Sam will take you through another um, candidate for yeah. our solutions. Great. Right. No, thanks, Tony. That's, that's brilliant. And lots of lots of comments and questions coming in, which is great to see. Um, if we if we don't uh, answer them all, we'll try and get back to them at the end. Um, Michelle, Tony did just run through the prices there, but we'll we'll try and uh, address that again if you miss that at the end. Great. So next scenario. Okay. So now we have Adam. Okay. So completely uh, contrasting um, scenario. Um, Adam is a, is, a, is a young bloke, he's, he's 36, and he works for an insurance firm. Okay, and he's progressively lost his sight and was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, RP, uh, just a few years ago. Um, as part of his job, um, as part of his role, um, Adam works on a variety of spreadsheets, documents, and PDFs, um, but he can no longer see them as clearly as before. Okay, so those, uh, that's Adam, that's, that's what he, he's trying to achieve. <laughs> And what he's struggling to achieve um, due to his uh, diagnosis of, of RP. Okay, now we're going to have another look at a simulation of what somebody with RP can or cannot see. Okay, so as you can see there, for those of you that can see this, um, it's a very severe condition, RP. Um, you've got tunnel vision there. Okay, so um, again, contrasting to, to somebody with macula who, who loses central vision but, but you know, maintains some of their peripheral vision. Adam has no peripheral vision at all. Um, so he, if you can imagine looking through a keyhole, um, that, that is, that is, you know, the severity of, of RP. Okay. Um, this is just a simulation, obviously, you know, if anybody in the room has RP and wants to, um, wants to discuss, uh, uh, uh what, you know, how, how that affects them. Um, that would be, that'd be great. Good. So let's look at some solutions then. Okay, so again, you've got the um, up at the top there. You've got uh, the the bullet point um, about what Adam wants to achieve. Okay, um, what he's struggling to achieve at the moment. Now, our first uh, solution. Okay, now, obviously, because Adam, you know, uses computer um, as part of his role, we're going to be looking at a few different pieces of software uh, within this solution. Okay, computer software. The first one is called Zoom Text. Okay, now it comes in a few different forms. Okay. Um, Zoom text magnifier, Zoom text magnifier with speech, okay, and Zoom text fusion, okay. Um, now, for the purposes of this, we're just going to look at, at Zoom text magnifier with speech, okay. So, what this allows you to do is um, it's a piece of software that you've got on your computer, and essentially it allows you to enhance your computer screen, um, obviously, to, to you know, um, to help you, you know, with, with magnification. Um, with with contrasts, okay. So it can obviously change the colours of the screen of, of text. Um, you can change, you can enhance the, the mouse pointer, um, so you can make it larger, different colour. And um, you can also enhance the cursor within a text document, for instance. All of these things that you can do um, to sort of make your life a lot easier when you're working, um, you know, with spreadsheets, with word documents, etc. Um, Zoom Text Magnifier Reader does have a speech element as well, so it has a, a screen reader. Um, uh, but a, a sort of basic screen reader. So it will allow you to read 
um, you know, it will read documents back for you. It, it will read web pages, that sort of thing. Um, but we're going to look at a designated screen reader in a second, which which uh, Stuart is going to demonstrate for us. OK, so that's Zoom text. OK, next up, we have a very, you know, sort of basic solution, but a large print keyboard. OK, Zoom text do uh, manufacture their own Zoom text keyboards um, and they come in two different forms. They come in this one, which is a black, black keyboard with white um, um, enlarged uh, keys. Okay, or you can get a yellow keyboard with, with black keys. Okay, um, yeah, and obviously it does what it says on the tin. It's, uh, you know, it's a much much more enhanced, much larger larger keyboard, which which obviously may help Adam um, within his his, uh, his his role. Um, very good, and yeah, as it says at the bottom there, it just works as a standard keyboard. Okay, so there's nothing else sort of uh, specialized about the keyboard there. Just you know, all the keys and the keystrokes would be exactly the same as a box standard QWERTY keyboard. Good. Now we've got basic and advanced feature training. Now this is something that I mentioned at the start that Sight and Sound do offer. Um, that obviously, if somebody is new to this speci specialist computer software, whether it's magnification software or whether it's screen reading software, which we're going to look at next, um, you know, we do uh, we do provide training, um, and that would involve one of our trainers. It would come to your workplace, to your, your home, uh, to, to a school, for instance, if it was a student, and they would deliver on-site training for either half a day, a full day, or they can deliver remote training, um, obviously via Zoom or Teams or another platform, um, in order to you know, take you through the advanced features of these, of, of these uh, pieces of software. Um, good. Uh, now, next up, we've got the screen reader, as I mentioned a second ago. Now, this is called JAWS, okay, by, by a company called Freedom Scientific, um, who also um, have actually developed Zoom text as well. Um, now, JAWS is a designated screen reader, okay? So what this does, there's no magnification involved. JAWS is another piece of software which takes over your computer, and this actually allows everything on your screen to be read out loud for you, okay? So using the keyboard, and very few uh, JAWS users actually use the mouse at all. Um, they would be using just the keyboard, okay? Using a, a series of keystrokes on the keyboard, you can navigate around your uh, computer, you know, through the home screen, through icons on the home screen, through you know, web pages, settings, etc., and everything will be read out loud for you, okay? Um, you know, you can have words echoed, you can have little characters echoed, whole sentences and paragraphs, etc. Um, and you've got a whole choice of multilingual synthesizers, sorry, two multilingual synthesizers, um, but there's uh, the option to change languages, etc. if you needed that. Um, good. And then the last one is a 14s monitor. Seems like quite an obvious solution for somebody like Adam. Um, he has tunnel vision with RP. Um, maybe a, a, a larger monitor would help him. Okay, so a 40 inch or plus. You know, I've been to visit people in, in, in their work setting that have plonked uh, a big widescreen monitor in front of their, uh, on their desk in order for them to try and, 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 uh, and, and see more on the screen. Okay, so have a think about those solutions. While Stuart's demonstrating JAWS, have a think about those five solutions and what you think may be most suitable for Adam. Okay, so Stuart, if you're happy to, I'm going to hand over to you now to demonstrate the JAWS screen reading software for us. Um, yep, am I unmuted, Sam? Um, you are unmuted. Yep. Uh, and what so I'll let me just do... bear with me, guys, and I will just share my screen hopefully here. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, and once Stuart has. Um, demonstrate that as well. I'm just going to talk you through a few of the features of Zoom text as well. Okay, but we'll let Stuart crack on first. How are we getting on there, Stuart? That should be it. Yep. Is that uh, coming through, Sam? So we're not oh. getting a screen share yet, no. Mm. Why? <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. It's saying that I'm put, I'm pressing the button to do it, but it's yep. I've got my computer sound checked. 
let's try. Here we go. Ah, here we go, Sam. Is that it now? No, we're still just getting your camera. Oh, or your your sort of your name across the screen. Uh, um, tell you what, Stuart, shall I talk about Zoom text first and then let you Okay, and have, just have, let have, me have, try and get this we'll done. Play around. Here. Yeah, all right, let's do that then. All right, guys. So we're uh, we're improvising here. Bear with. All right. So uh, where are we? There we go. Good. All right. So we're back up and running. So um, before Stuart demonstrates Jaws, let's have a talk about Zoom text. Okay. So uh, Zoom text magnifier reader is the the, the chosen um, uh, version that we're going to use uh, or talk about. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a fully integrated. Uh, piece of magnification and reading software. Okay, and I know this is tailored for somebody with low vision. Okay, somebody with no vision, see, they wouldn't benefit from this. Okay, this is a piece of magnification software. Okay, and you can do a variety of different things. You can customize, you know, the colors, you can customize the mouse pointer, the mouse, the, the text cursor, um, you can invert the colors, etc. And we're going to have a look at those things in a second. Okay, and, and a, key, a key element to this is that it has a feature which is called x font magnification so in layman's terms um you know usually with a camera for instance when you zoom in to a, a certain amount the picture becomes distorted pixelated and very becomes very unclear with the more you know the more magnification that you 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 have with zoom text okay the image remains um just as clear um as if you were at times one magnification okay so you could get up to times 20 which we'll look at in a second and the, the image will not be distorted or pixelated in any way okay um so we'll look at a few of the the fe magnification features here so you've got times one magnification in the top left there okay so just as somebody from with the naked eye would see okay um but then down the bottom there you can see times two so you can see we're already really stepping up the magnification there so what would happen now is you can see the green mouse pointer there as the, the the person would move their mouse pointer around the screen okay obviously you know the uh the image on the screen that the mouse pointer would would dictate essentially so you use the mouse pointer to go down to the bottom right hand corner of the screen to adjust the volume or you'd go down to the left to go to the windows bar etc okay so you use the mouse pointer to navigate around the magnified screen okay um and then we go up to time six so you're seeing real clear, but very sort of intense magnification there. Okay. And then times 20, obviously that is all you would see on your screen. So I've just taken a screenshot of my monitor at times 20. Yeah. So that's all I can see. Now we would recommend anybody that does, you know, their, their eyesight or their eye condition um, has got to the point where they do need times 20 or above. Okay. We would recommend changing to a full, to a screen reader. Okay, because somebody at that magnification, they really are going to struggle. They're going to really strain their eyes to have to move their mouse constantly around the screen to find what they are looking for. Okay, so anything above times 20, you probably want to consider a screen reader. Okay, good. And some of the other enhancements that you can use. Okay, we've got the blue dye um, enhancement at the top left. That is quite often used for somebody with dyslexia. It's not necessarily an eye condition, um, but a blue dye that would allow somebody with dyslexia to absorb the text much better. You know to, to to be able to read much more clearly um, you've got inverted brightness lens view which which basically makes the mouse pointer a magnifying glass okay so wherever you move that mouse pointer that specific section would be magnified okay and you can adjust the size of that box as you see fit you can make it larger smaller and then you've got custom pointer as i said as well so you can put a big red circle around the pointer to make it much more obvious as to where the mouse is Okay, so those are just a few of the enhancements that you can you can use with Zoom Text. Good, and then a few of the other features, which I won't go too much into. You've got the app reader as well, which essentially, as I said, you can ask Zoom Text to read a, page, a document, a Word document for you, or a web page, for instance. And um, by using a certain keystroke, um, you can ask Zoom Text to 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 read the text out loud for you. Okay, good. Um, now we have uh, Jaws. Now, Stuart, are you are you feeling comfortable with the? Uh, um, I, I couldn't um, actually have a play around, Sam, because I would have had to stop your screen share. You know, when ah. I was trying to. Um, right. But if you stop yours, I can have one more go at it. I'm just conscious of time as well. Don't worry. Let's just see. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got everything ticked. Now, is that still not doing anything? No, we're not getting a screenshot. Um, this, is, uh, this is strange. Don't worry, Stuart. We can just yeah. discuss yours, if that's okay. We'll, we'll discuss it, yeah. I don't know yeah, what's do want, got do, going on. Don't worry. Do you want to talk about it briefly? Well, yeah, I mean, I think you basically covered everything um, in terms of, you know, a great introduction to it. Um, just, just a couple of points on it. Um, I think um, for someone who has, has no um, useful vision like myself, then it's ideal. Or someone who, as, as you say, can maybe, maybe has some useful vision, but maybe for some, some reason Zoom takes maybe isn't suitable, then as Sam says, you really would have to go with the JAWS screen reader because JAWS is, you know, if, if, you, if you analyze it in terms of a, like the, the horse in terms of screen readers, JAWS is the thoroughbred. JAWS is for me, you know, the, the go-to option. And it works with all Windows operating systems, uh, you know, going back quite a few, but, my strong recommendation would be to actually use it with Windows 10 for, you know, the, the best accessibility. It really does work wonderfully um, with Windows 10. And um, possibly for an Adam's case, um, it might be good for him because it definitely works with all Microsoft applications. It works in, in Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. Um, it's also great on the internet. So, um, you know, it'll read all web pages to you, whether you're using Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. Um, I wouldn't use Internet Explorer anymore. I think that's had its day. And I suppose who would use it? Um, anyone, you know, if I use it and if I use myself as an example, I use it in my personal life. Um, I also use it um, every day for work purposes. And I also, and it can also be used in the, the education sector. So uh, schools, colleges, etc. And as Sam says, you know, it will do everything. It will read, um, you know, everything on the screen. And you can, the, the easiest way to control it is by using the arrow key um, along with the tab key and the, some other modifier keys such as the shift keys and the enter key. So I'm sorry it hasn't, Zoom has just been playing up this morning. So um, I can't Don't really worry. do a demo, but if there's any questions on it, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, thanks, Stuart. No, that's that's more than more than um, uh, enough uh, for, the, for, for that. That's great. Thanks so much. Um, so, Tony, uh, you've been keeping an eye on the questions, observations that we've been having. Yep, yep, yep. We've got no Q and A's, but is there's, there's a number of um, lots in, in the, the chat, chat box coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Christine saying, assuming it does have the type of RP that reduces the visual field significantly, I think JAWS would be the best option for him. And she goes on to explain the reasons why. Um, you, hold on to that one, Christine. Uh, I think we're going to address that uh, very shortly. Mm -hmm. um, we'll just record it. Yeah, you've answered that one. Yeah. Right. I agree. Zoom text order would be helpful. This is from Sarah. But again, would need to relearn JAWS once sight deteriorates. Magnification isn't always the option for RP. I agree with that, Sarah. We'll explain why we've suggested magnification in a little while. Um, with regards to this relearning, yeah, it could be an issue. However, uh, we've not covered it yet, and I'm hoping uh, Sam will do in just a moment. There is a uh -huh. product that he mentioned up front called Zoom Text Fusion. Yeah, yeah. Now... All right. Okay. I'll briefly go through Zoom Text Fusion. So you've got um, two programs here, Zoom Text and JAWS, but they are integrated. So you will have Zoom Text magnification. You will have, um, you can have the uh, Zoom Text reader, which is rather limited. It will read text and documents and things like that. But the other element is the JAWS itself. So you can use the magnification and the JAWS together so that you do have a full-blown screen reader. Um, JAWS will also, has a, a lot of shortcuts in it that will also help you control your computer as well. Um, searching the web, for example, becomes a lot, lot more easier. He says that tongue in cheek. Um, than it would be to just uh, go through uh, Zoom text. So, Zoom Text Fusion will give you both those features. If the eye condition progresses to the stage where um, using the screen will be totally out of the question, you have learnt the JAWS already. So that I hope that answers the question, Sarah. Okay. Nice. Uh, 
That's great. Thanks. Uh, Raymond, the Bell Valley in Jersey will need the training in house. Um, Manisha, I think that answers your question as well. And yes, training. Now, let me just go through something. Who's going to pay for this is a question we're often asked. Um, he's at work. He um, will be entitled to um, funding through Access to Work, which is a government agency, uh, not purely for visually impaired people, but with anybody with any difficulties at work, uh, disabilities or anything like that. So they will fund it. Now, Access to Work will insist on him having training on any equipment they provide. So that will be... Um, included in uh, magnification it's a skill to think your screen is now much bigger so more movement is required and this is taxing on the brain um chris yeah i agree with that but there is a shortcut that a lot of people ignore or don't know it's there i know when i do the training i point this one out straight away if you do caps lock shift and then any of the arrows your screen will pan around there's also another feature called um ah what's it called quick find or something like that where your screen will go to one times magnification. There's a grayed out, a transparent grayed out rectangle that you can position over a part of the screen using the arrow keys or mouse pointer or whatever. And then um, it will bring it that particular section of the screen uh, in magnified form. So there's various ways you can get around it. But yeah, I agree. You've got to rethink things. Grant. Okay, over Thanks, to you, Sam. Guys, yeah, um, yeah, thank you. I know that we are slightly pushed for time, guys. So we, we will, I imagine, run over uh, past 10. But if you are, if you need to leave, obviously, please do. This will be recorded. Um, good. All right, then. So let's have a look at uh, what we've got for Adam. Okay, good. Yeah. So um, as Tony said in the first scenario, there is no wrong or right answers here, really. Okay. It's, you know, these are just suggested or advised. Um, but we've we've uh, suggested that, that Zoom text would be more suitable for Adam in this case. OK, and um, the obvious reason being that magnification will reduce the visual stress that Adam is currently having. Um, you know, he sees very little um, through this this tunnel vision. OK, um, so, you know, at the minute he would experience sort of fatigue with his eyes much, much quicker. Um, but. You know, by using Zoom text, this will help with that fatigue. You know, okay. Um, as Tony mentioned, there is a, a the, the fusion option. Okay, so for somebody, Adam may benefit from this, but for somebody with a, an eye condition perhaps that deteriorates throughout the day, you know, fusion would be perfect because they could use the magnification in the morning. Okay, and then in the afternoon they come back after lunch and their eyes are actually very tired. They're struggling to see. Um, they could then rely on the screen reader. OK, um, but for somebody with Adam at the moment who still does has some usable vision, Zoom text, we feel would be would be the, the right solution for him. Can okay. I interject here? Yeah. OK, so um, this this is always uh, a solution that people say, no, 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 no. Yes, it's up to Adam. I appreciate that. But we have found and this is why we've gone for Zoom text. A lot of the screen enhancements will help him uh, that you've seen. But more importantly, we find that it doesn't matter how little vision a person has, they still want to keep hold of it. They still want to use it. So, yeah, we'll say JAWS, it's a screen reader. You don't need the magnification. You just get on with it. Um, in fact, you could use it with your screen turned off. They say, no, 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 I can still see it. I want to be able to do it. Now, I know magnification uh, can cause its own problems with RP, but the other enhancements together with the reader um, make it a better option. But again, it's down to Adam, not me. Carry on. Sorry, Sam. Definitely. No, no, no. That's all, all helpful. Thank you, Tony. Um, yeah, good. So exactly that. So yeah, Zoom text, you know, would, would allow Adam to, to, to make the most of what usable vision he has left. Okay. And that's, you know, that is, that's important, you know. Um, Good. Large print keyboard is quite an obvious one. Um, you know, for somebody that is using computer so much within their role, um, you know, relatively inexpensive, £99 for a Zoom text keyboard. But obviously, if Adam was seeking funding through Access to Work, all of this would be covered, as Tony mentioned. And software training is key. OK, for somebody that is brand new to this. In fact, if somebody, you know, if they've dabbled with it in the past, it's always good to refresh. Um, you know, because obviously, as uh, Zoom text, 
you know upgrades and and, and they you know they they uh, they add features and they change features um but we absolutely would recommend software training with any of these pieces of software um which which hopefully access to work will fund uh, which they usually do the two that we felt possibly weren't in this case um weren't suitable we've got jaws there um you know although adam does have very little vision jaws is a full screen reader okay meaning that you know adam he wouldn't need to use a mouse to navigate, um, but this is potentially something that Adam will need to use. You know, as he's, um, you know, Jaws may be something to consider, as I mentioned, going forward or Fusion, for instance. Um, but currently, you know, we've got the magnification software there, which which should be more suitable at the moment. And then a large monitor. I know Chris has um, alluded to this already uh, in the chat box. A large monitor is quite often, um, you know, the first thing somebody or or an employer would think of, you know, if they have an employee that, you know, has an eye condition such as Adam's. Um, however, this can cause um, other issues down the line. Okay. Although a large monitor, yes, will 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 put more more on the screen for Adam to see. Okay. Um, eventually, he's gonna he's gonna encounter neck issues. Um, you know, he's gonna be having to move his head um, so much throughout the day. You know, eight hours a day, five days a week. Um, this eventually is gonna cause strain issues um, or other injuries, other complications. Um, rather than getting a 50 inch monitor, 40 inch monitor, just invest in some magnification software. You can keep your 32 inch or your 28, 24 inch monitor um, much more comfortable. Adam doesn't need to move his head. All he needs to do is navigate using the mouse or using a series of keystrokes, etc. Okay, it's much, 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 much easier and much safer in fact, you know. Um, so, that's why we felt a large monitor wasn't perhaps uh, suitable in this scenario. Good. All right. We are very close for time, so we'll try and whip through this last um, this last scenario, which Tony is going to uh, run through for you. Okay. Right. Give us a slide, Sam. Okay. Now we're going to meet Holly. Um, Holly. Uh, a lot younger. She's seven years old, a uh, KS1 student. Now, Holly's um, eye condition, ocular albinism and nystagmus. Um, difficulties include reading handwriting, notes and instructions in class. She's got social anxiety around other students, uh, drawing diagrams uh, for lessons such as mag maths and geography. So, what are we going to come up with for young Holly here? Me. Just, just an indication as to how Holly sees the world. There's normal vision. And this is a simulation of uh, the, uh, I, the way she sees it caused by her albinism. That's not to say uh, the nystagmus causes other issues as well. Okay, so Holly, she needs to read handwriting, handwritten notes and instructions in class. She's got social anxiety around other students, well, it's understandable. Uh, drawing diagrams for lessons, including maths and geography. Let's go through um, potential solutions. Tactipad drawing board. Okay, now the Tactipad drawing board is a drawing board with a foam uh, bed upon which you can uh, put a special uh, film paper and create uh, drawings and diagrams using the tools provided. You'll get a ruler, set square, protractor, uh, compass, and a whole range of other uh, tools are available. Um, a scribe, she can draw onto this film and it will, how can I say, emboss, let's, call, let's say it'll emboss the images onto that film. So when she takes it away from the pad, she's got not just a visual side, but also a raised uh, tactile uh, image that she's created. Now it says you compare it with the computer software. There's some software called um, Tactile View, where you can create them on your computer, a bit like a bit like Coral Draw and that sort of thing. And then there's uh, another device that will uh, map that out onto this film. So you can do it automatically if you want to. Um, it's it's very easy to use. Um, the concept is quite simple, but it's very effective. Next, we've got Sam. Cut to sleep. 
thank you. <laughs> Back to the, the portable video magnifiers. Uh, you've seen those. We've gone on those. We're running short of time, so I'm not going to go through them again. You know what I'm talking about. I'll come to that, Christine. Um, fully functioning screen reader. Now, Synaptic tablet. We all use tablets. Um, Synaptic uh, have come up with a tablet and a phone that presents um, all the apps in a menu format. Goes down the screen, um, very clear, uh, change the color contrast, change the magnification levels, change the order in which they appear, and it will speak. So if you, easiest way, draw your finger from the top of the screen down to the bottom, as it passes over these menu items, it will read each one, and you do the same as you do, double tap, and it will open that. Um, laptop and Zoom Tech software, we've discussed Zoom Tech software. Um, obviously, uh, she'd need a laptop to run it on. Now, no, we'll come to that in a moment. Um, next, Compact 10 HD with speech. You haven't seen this one yet. This is another 10-inch uh, portable, yeah, it's another portable uh, video magnifier. Uh, it's got a 10-inch screen. All the features that the other one has, all the others have, with one addition. Now, uh, I'm going to try and, if, if Sam puts me across to my screen, I'll try and demonstrate this to you. Okay. Here you go, Tony. You're All right. Live. Let's just move this camera back now so that we can see it in f its glory. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So here we've got, um, let's put that away, a video magnifier just as you have with all the others, touch screen, so we can increase the magnification, decrease it. We can change the color contrast, just as we did before. It will also run with the pinch um, gestures that you use on your tablet. So that's uh, quite useful. Now then, a bit I folded away. This, can you, no, you can't see that. This arm goes over and sits like that. Now. If I adjust this, there's a camera built onto that. So if I touch the icon in the center of the screen, come on. Oh. Ignore that. Try that again when I've got something in view. Okay, so here's what we want to read. If I touch that again, it takes a snapshot of that page. Now there's a progress bar that's running across the top as it's processing this image. And in just a moment, can you hear that? Yep. yep. Okay, so it's reformatted the whole page. Um, it will take out any images and it's highlighting as it reads across. And you probably saw I can adjust the magnification just as I did previously and the color contrasts. But it will read it to me. So that's Compact 10, another video magnifier, but with the additional um, speech. Great. Thank you, Tony. And then I'm going to give you guys a quick demo of the uh, Synaptic tablet and the TactiPad. So I'm just going to swap my camera over. Okay, guys. So here we go. Just like that. Hopefully, you can all see this okay. So, um, I've got an Android tablet here. Okay, so Synaptic software is only compatible with Android uh, devices. So, an Android phone or an Android uh, tablet, not 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 Mac or Apple. Uh, sorry, Apple or you know iOS products. Okay, so it's um, all it is. Um, this is a, a Samsung Android tablet. Okay, which you know. 
um, anybody can use. Um, and what I would do is I would put the Synaptic software onto the tablet in the form of an app. Okay, so you can use a tablet just you know without Synaptic, or you can enter the app, and it would uh, it would then um, yeah show you th this this screen here. So it basically it, it takes over the the tablet and it and it enhances all the colours and it also adds a screen reader. Okay, so if I hold my finger on the uh, tablet, WhatsApp calls and chat over the internet, Skype voice and video call, camera, take and view photos, to tablet settings, calendar and appointment reminders. Okay, so if I slide my finger down to W. Web browser. Web browser, and then release my finger. Web browser menu. It page then give me options, page. search, type address, homepage, etc. Um, Main menu, grid page. Obviously schools now are using tablets more and more within uh, the classroom setting. Um, you know, so this would, we hope would 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 allow Holly um, to to feel involved. Okay, uh, I'm sort of uh, uh, jumping the gun a little bit with with um, sort of advice solutions, but this essentially is what you know what Synaptic allows you to do. It allows you to use a fully functioning uh, tablet um, in a much more accessible way. Okay, so it has other features as well. It has a uh, a magnifier built in. It has a reading machine. Okay, so I can scan text and it will read it aloud for me. Okay. Um, you can access the internet, social media, um, you know, Netflix, you know, everything that you um, can do in a regular tablet, but it obviously makes it much more accessible. Okay. And if I want to quit Synaptic, you know, if you know, a family bought this for their, one of their children, um, but the family also wanted to benefit from using the tablet as well, I can just go to quit Synaptic. Quit Synaptic menu, page one of Do one. I want to turn the tablet off or do I want to just go back to the Android screen? That's what I want to do. Continue. Yes, Do I want no the synaptic voice one. on or off? Main off. To okay. restart synaptic, turn the tablet fully off, then on again. And then it would take me back to the Android screen. Okay, just like a normal, uh, just just as you would see a, a regular Android tablet. There you go. Okay. And then if I want to find synaptic again, okay, obviously just type in synaptic at the top. Synaptic, and there is the app. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. The synaptic app is right there. I just tap on that. And it takes me straight back into the Synaptic software. Okay. Um, synaptic tablet main menu. So that's the Synaptic tablet. Now I'm going to quickly show you the taxi pad. Okay, guys. So I'll just move my other camera out of the way. There we go. Okay. Now, in a nutshell, no technology involved with this one. It is a tactile drawing board. Okay. Um, so I've already sort of uh, drawn some uh, some tactile lines on there, okay? And what it does is, this is a piece of German film, okay? Which sits uh, underneath the outer rim, okay? Um, and then I've, I've, I've drawn on there, use it, you can use it just a regular pen, or you can use some of the tools that come with the uh, come with the tactile pad. So as a magnetic compass, okay? This is just one of the, uh, so this magnetic compass, I'll just sit on the drawing board like this, okay? Then I can use the. Oops, let's just slid off there, so we'll see them. Okay, I don't know if you can see that very clearly, but it has very clearly embossed a tactile line onto the page. It comes with a series of accessories and tools. You've got a ruler, you've got protractors, obviously a compass. Um, it comes in this really nice leather case which obviously the student can take you know take between classes if they need to okay there are a few other accessories as well there's a uh, circle frame okay which can be used for, for drawing various different images and there's a graph grid okay so they're rubber bands as you can see very simple technology there but that would allow the student um yeah to be able to obviously feel the uh, the, the, the lines across the page and then they'll be able to join up using the ruler um in order to create different different images, um, I know somebody's already commented about you know how she, she you know surely Holly still has some vision. Why would she benefit from using um, a tactile drawing board? Um, and that is absolutely right. This primarily is used for for children or students with no vision. Okay. However, somebody that, that does have a severe eye condition may still find this beneficial. Um, you know, this would allow somebody you know a key stage one student. To, to become engaged with, you know, drawing, um, because you know if they're struggling already to, to draw images, 
for instance, or just regular pictures. You know, my stepdaughter, for instance, she's eight years old, um, absolutely loves crafting, loves drawing. That's sort of, that's been her lockdown, basically, is just making things. You know, this would really allow somebody like Holly to engage with that, um, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a different way. Um, so this is a tactile, tacty pad, okay, very simple. Uh, you don't have to plug it in. There's no, no electronics involved, um, but a really unique and quite novel solution. Um, good. And somebody else did mention, is there any free training um, uh, based around the tactic pad? We actually ran a session with a group of QTVIs, a group of teachers for the visually impaired, last week with the developer and manufacturer of the tactic pad and of the tactile view software as well. That session was recorded. Okay, so if you are interested and you want to see the content of that session, just let me know and I'll send it over to you. Okay, um, good. That is, uh, that's all the demos. So what I'll do now is I'll reshare my screen so that we can wrap up the presentation. Where are we? There we go. Good. Uh, good. Tony, I'll hand back over. Thank you. Okay, so um, they're the solutions. Uh, so time. Sorry, man. That's all right. No problem. <laughs> okay, so let, let, let's go through um, the recommendations or, or our ideas as, as to what might be used. Synaptic tablet, for obvious reasons. Now, tactipad drawing board. Um, I think it would be useful for her. Uh, there's nothing so she has to have no vision to be able to get the benefit of tactile. Uh, graphics and drawings gives her a haptic experience um, as well as a visual experience if if she uh, well in her case it would do compact 10 with speech um, yeah why not uh, when you're using a magnification for any length of time I'm sure you'll agree um, that your eyes get tired very rapidly so the speech, you can sit back and listen to it. Just give your eyes a bit of a chance to recover. Um, portable video magnifier. Woo. Perhaps not as, as beneficial as a Compact 10. And the laptop and Zoom Tech software. Well, um, at the stage she's at at school, one wonders whether a laptop and Zoom Text or even a laptop, let alone uh, the specialist software to go with it, will be appropriate. So that, that, that's how we see it. Um, everybody will have their own opinions, um, but it's really down to each individual user to decide which is best for them. We can only present them with what is available and uh, give our guidance, but ultimately it's their decision. Okay. Well, just add to that, Tony, as well. Cause yeah. I, I actually, I, I, I created this... Um, this scenario for for a, the nice Dagmas charity that I ran a presentation similar to this with, and um, you know there was a lot of positive feedback actually about the tactic pad for the for students and children with uh, nice Dagmas albinism and aniridia. Um, you know, although as we've mentioned, you know they still have some usable vision. Um, for younger students especially, um, you know, just getting them engaged with drawing, getting them engaged with maths, with 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 you know creating graphs that sort of thing. Um, you know, this can be a really sort of unique way of doing it. Um, and as I, you know, I mentioned in, in the scenario as well, social anxiety for, for students of that age with an eye condition, you know, can be quite a big deal. And it's not necessarily just about, you know, the eye condition. It's about the sort of impacts of the eye condition as well on, on, a, on, a, on a child's mental health, for instance. So uh, if we can help with anxiety, social anxiety at school, allowing them to use a tablet, just as all of their friends are, um, you know, the synaptic software would allow Holly to do that you know if she wants to create pictures and draw images draw pictures of her brothers and sisters for instance you know the tacti pad would also allow Holly to do that in a much more accessible way um so that was me thinking quite outside the box there not everybody might agree with that but but this is what this session's all about um good and Tony if you want to just briefly mention DSA I know that obviously Holly's much no. too young uh okay yes she is very young um hold on yeah. Let, bear with me because I think that might have there was a chap there. She's a school, so it depend on the teacher's school to buy the equipment for her. Yeah, that, that's where we were going with this one, Manisha. Yeah. Um, the way it stands at the moment, she's in, um, she's at school, so the local education authority uh, should be looking to fund this equipment. Uh, this is very much depends on where you live. 
It depends on uh, the experience of the QTVIs who are going to specify this equipment. Um, some counties are better than others. I'll say no more than that. But as um, Holly progresses through the education system, when she, if she goes to college, then the college will be uh, responsible for, for, for providing equipment for her. If she goes on to further education, um, if she goes to university uh, on a graduate course, then uh, something called DSA comes into being. That's Disabled Students Allowance. Uh, and as its name suggests, it's open to anybody with uh, disability. Um, we're talking about eye conditions. Disabled Students Allowance um, through Student Finance England or Student Loans Company will fund a lot, a hell of a lot of this equipment for the length of the course she is attending. Um, and it will be continually uh, reappraised to decide whether the equipment is of no use to her anymore and she needs to upgrade it. So all of the time um, she has an, a, an assessor that will follow her through the whole system and uh, disabled students allowance will fund it for her. That doesn't apply to higher education. It's got to be further education. Have I got that right, Sam? Yeah. Or is it the other way around? Sorry, no. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, other way around. Other way around. So right. it's got to be at university doing a graduate course is the answer yes. to that one. Yeah. Yes. Good, good, good. Thanks, Tony. Um, good. So now we'll just summarise, guys. We're, we're, we're coming towards the end of the presentation now. But just to give you a brief overview again of the scenarios we've looked at, Catherine, Adam, macular degeneration, retinitis pigmentosa, you know, very different ages, conditions, you know, things that they want to achieve, things that they can't currently, they're not able to currently achieve. Um, we've looked at uh, Holly as well, um, you know, you know, much, much younger, um, you know, uh, ocular albinism and nystagmus, uh, uh, completely different eye condition as well. Um, so, you know, really contrasting conditions and then I'll hand over to Tony to just talk us through the, the solutions again, the advice solutions we've looked at. Okay, uh, so for Catherine with a macro degeneration, portable magnifying glass, portable video magnifiers, desktop magnifier, all of those will be suitable um, in combination with one another or as individual items. We do find that a lot of people go for a desktop magnifier, but also have uh, a portable video magnifier as well for its portability and carrying it around the shops, for example, restaurants, things like that. Not so good OCR, either the desktop magnifier or the Orcam My Reader, simply because um, they're heavily reliant on um, speech and text being printed. Uh, so over the top for the desktop magnifier, in my view, the My Reader wouldn't solve any of our problems. Adam, Zoom text magnification, reader software. Now, a lot of people are going to go away from this saying, oh, I disagree, it should have been JAWS. Um, but I reiterate, a lot of people would come across if they've got slightest bit of vision, they want to use it and hold it. Now, that was uh, backed up by uh, one of your colleagues who's, who agreed with what I said about that and then went on to say um, that it also means that the particular person is not seen as totally different. You know, oh, what's that software? Why, why is his computer talking to him and things like that? So there's another issue. Uh, screen reading software, yes, possibly with Zoom Text Fusion, so that as his condition, if it progresses uh, and deteriorates, he has got that as a backup. Um, why won't my screen move up, Sam? What's below Jaws? Uh, oh. There we All go. right. Yeah. Okay, don't worry. Oh, a large monitor. We've discussed the um, pros and cons with a with a large monitor. A lot, large monitor. yeah. A lot of employers will automatically say, "Oh, give them a bigger screen." That's mm -hmm. not the answer. No. Uh, they may overcome to a degree one issue, but they're presenting him with another because he's constantly nicking. Okay, uh, and with Holly, tactpad, drawing board, synaptic uh, tablet, compact ten magnifier with the speech, uh, which is why we've put the handheld video magnifiers below the line. And the uh, Zoom text and laptop, 
that's below the line simply because of her age. But I'm sure as she progresses through uh, school, that will come into being eventually. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Good. And uh, yeah, so so before we wrap up, thank you for those that have, uh, that have hung on. Um, just to talk you through a few useful resources for, for you to look at um, post session. Um, so Sight and Sound uh, a few years ago developed an app um, which not everybody's aware of actually. It's not that well marketed, I must say, but it's really, really useful. It's called What AT um, on Android, I believe on iOS. So on an Apple device, it's What AT um, Pro. Is that right, Tony? I think yes. it's the other way around. Oh, the other way around. So on, on I think Android, yeah. it's What AT Pro. Yeah. And then on an Apple device, it'd be just What AT. Um, and basically, um, the app, what it does is, um, as we have done today, it basically lists dozens and dozens and dozens of eye conditions and it pairs, um, you know, several different solutions to those conditions, you know, what we feel will be most suitable. Okay, but it gives you a real detailed background about the eye condition and then it suggests solutions and that we can provide for you. Okay, so check the app out if you've not got it already. Obviously, that's our website. Okay, um, all of our products are on there. It gives you more information about DSA about uh, training, all of that sort of thing. Um, our specialist uh, assistive technology advisors, so myself and Tony, and Stuart, um, who, who um, is, is, you know, he is one of us, uh, but, but, but obviously working for uh, Seascape. Um, that's our role. We go out to your home, to your place of work, to your school, to your college, university, and we deliver assistive technology assessments. You know, we work with you to find the, the suit, most suitable solution for you um, um, you know, that, that will benefit you going forward. Um, we've got a designated tech support team. Okay. Really, really useful, um, sort of, um, string to our bow as a company tech support, you know, you have lifetime technical support once you have, have bought a product from sight and sound. Um, you know, even if you're out of warranty, um, you will be supported, um, from a, a technical point of view. And then our training, we've already talked about that, but we've got a, an experienced qualified training team. Um, which will come out and, and, and train you to use not just software. Um, we have a lot of Braille technology as well, uh, which I know Tony does a lot of, 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 of training with our Braille devices. Um, so yeah, so we offer training and we also have a, a, a number of different um, uh, things going online at the moment, obviously because of, of, of COVID and lockdown. We have a whole host of podcasts, set, uh, webinars, blogs. Please stay close to our social media, to our website. Um, mailing lists if you're if you're um, signed up and you'll get all that information. Stuart, uh, do you want to give us a bit of uh, bit of info about any resources that, that Seascape can offer? Uh, obviously the website, social media. If you're still with us, Stuart B. Hang on, is that me now, Sam? There you go. Yep, that's me now. Um, so yeah, so I mean, we, we, we do have a website which is seascape.org.uk. Um, on there, you, you can contact us, you know, if you have any queries, you can contact us through a form that's on there. Um, maybe a quicker way is also to email info at seascape.org.uk and that won't come through and if there's te any technology questions they'll just pass it on to me um, and I'm more than happy to um, to answer them. Our, our main kind of role though is I think Sam's all, all really, same as kind of Sam really, you know, people are referred to me mostly in the Fife area up in or you know, sometimes maybe a wee bit further afield and I can go out and do um, some freelance kind of training with Sight and Sound, you know, on JAWS, on Braille, on, um, you know, other specialist devices from Sight and Sound. So, um, the, the main area is in Fife, but again, anywhere in, in, in Scotland or, or further afield, if you feel that, um, you know, I can help with anything, then please do just get in touch. Excellent. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Stuart. Um, great. And, the, and then the last thing to note, really, is that obviously now that things are relaxing slightly, I know it's a bit different up in Scotland, but, um, you know, they're slightly slower at relaxing things than, than, than the way around here. But... Um, we are now able to visit you at home, at work, um, probably not at school yet, as most of them aren't open, but um, we do have a system on our website. So if you visit the Slight and Sound website, you can actually register your interest for a home or a work demonstration. 
um, the, the referral will then be passed on to the relevant um, member of the team. So obviously me up north or in Scotland, Tony down in the southwest. We've got another team member that covers the Midlands and somebody else that covers London and the southeast. Um, so please do get in touch. We are absolutely, um, you know, back open for business. I was up in uh, a little village called Churnside, which is right on the Scottish borders uh, yesterday, uh, visiting a, a customer um, just, just north of Berwick, Berwick upon Tweed. Uh, it's really good to be back on the road and visiting uh, visiting people at home and, and helping them with the technology. Um, so please do get in touch if you, if you would like a demonstration of any of our solutions, any of our devices, please do let us know. So I'll just Do quickly it. come back in, Sam, just with one quick thing, if that's okay. Just just a quick update. If anybody's listening in Scotland or in the, the Fife era on Seascape, our offices are still firmly closed. Mm -hmm. um, and there is absolutely, I have absolutely no idea. I know as much as you guys do, we have no idea when we're going to be open. And just, just because of the way things are, I, I can't see myself being back in the office. I mean, face-to-face -face was a huge, um, you know, part of our work my work with clients and you know the, the waiting list for us is huge but I know that we are um, we're having discussions with you and with Sam on yep. you know working on on getting more outreach work done when things calm yeah. down a bit so watch this space and we'll be in touch on that as well yeah we can yeah we're certainly on hand um, to, to, to sort of uh, to, to fill in um, if there are any, are any uh, people on the session that that fall into the seascape catchment area um, you know, I'll certainly be able to visit you, um, you know, providing full PPE as well. That's worth, worth mentioning that we will obviously be wearing PPE and we can provide PPE for you um, as well, if, if, if that would make you feel more comfortable. Um, but yes, following strict guidelines. Um, great. Um, before we wrap up, um, thank you, Tony. Thanks, Stuart. My pleasure. Um, yeah, really good to have you guys on board. Um, Stuart B, do you want to quickly plug your next session uh, two weeks' time? Yes, I was going to ask. So, um, yeah. in two weeks' time, I think that is the 30th. Um, I, yeah. I came up with a, a, an idea of doing a, an, a, a, a session around audio editing software and um, because I use I use audio editing software every day. I, I create podcasts, I, I do audio tutorials for clients, etc. And I think it's fair to say that, you know, many visual impaired people or, or you know, even sighted people I've worked with, they, they have a, a real interest in um, you know, creating the and editing their own audio, whether it's just speech or, you know, actually mixing tracks, which again, we will, I will demo that um, in two weeks time for you. Um, and it's just that they don't know where to start. They, they just don't know what's accessible, what's user friendly. So I'm going to attempt to, to do that in two weeks time. And it will work this time because I'm just going to ditch this works laptop and I'm going to be using my own. So um, I can guarantee that it will be, um, it, should be, it should be interesting, hopefully. I'm really looking forward to it. So if anybody's got an interest, um, Sam will send out the details shortly, I'm sure. And um, get yourself registered. <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks, Stuart. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in touch with everybody as, as always, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll send out the registration details for that session on the 30th of July at 10 a.m., as always. Um, I'm sorry if we didn't get uh, much chance to, to sort of, uh, you know, discuss general um, tech or, or, or any of your um, questions or queries today, but please do send them to either myself or Stuart via those contact details that are on screen. Stuart.beverage at seascape.org.uk or sam.colton at sightandsound.co.uk. Please do let us know and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Great. Thanks everyone that have, that have hung on and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you all very, session, uh, very soon for another Social Hub session. All right. Thanks a lot. Th thanks guys and take okay. care. Okay, take care. Bye Cheers. guys. Bye. Bye-bye.